Hi, I'm Roger Peng from the Simply Statistics blog, and I'm here with uh, Jeff Leake and Raphael Irizarry, my co-editors at the blog. Um, so this is our very first video podcast, and what we're trying to do here is uh, occasionally put out videos where we discuss interesting topics in science and statistics. Um, so this is our very first podcast, and we're still trying to figure things out a little bit. So, But with any luck, if you just bear with us, I'm sure you'll be able to see Rafa play the guitar at some point. So um, if you have any suggestions for uh, topics that you know we should talk or you want to hear about, uh, please leave a comment at the blog at simplystatistics.org or send me an email at rdpeng at gmail.com. All right, so uh, Jeff, it occurred to me that, you know, so we've been doing the blog for like a year now. Right. And um, it, there may be some people out there who don't really know why we're doing this or like, or maybe we don't even know why we're doing this. Right. <laughs> so, um, and so, you know, maybe we should talk about kind of what, what the purpose of the blog is. That's a good question. So I guess when we first started doing it, it was sort of, um, it was about a year ago, and I realized that I was sending you guys links uh, over email all the time with, you know, a source of data or a, a story about statistics, and they were coming out uh, sort of regularly, and they were pretty interesting, and I started to realize that they probably wouldn't just be interesting to, to me and to you guys, and so... Well, there we was, but there was a theme to those emails, though, right? I mean... There was a bit of a theme. Yeah. So it, they tend to be, you know... I, they tended to be sort of about data and this sort of data-driven approach to statistics as opposed to sort of a, a, a more methodological or, or tools-based approach to, to statistics. And so, uh, you know, the three of us kind of think that way about statistics, and we figured there would be other people out there that, that thought that way too. And so we figured, you know, let's put it on the Internet and see what happens. And then um, so I sort of started this blog, and I had a little trouble coming up with a name, so I emailed, you know, Rafa, and he helped me come up with Simply Statistics, for better or worse. Yeah. And that's sort of how it launched. I mean, that, that was about it, right? Well, if I recall, one of the themes of all those links that you sent us is that the word statistics was never actually mentioned, right? That's right. I that, mean, was a, that was a big driver. That, that a lot of these right. big data initiative papers were not including the word statistics or talking to statisticians. Uh, and we were definitely right. doing that. the work related to, to that, to, to discovering new insights by looking at data. That's what a lot of us do. And yeah. I mean, in part, that's why I... Uh, accepted uh, Jeff's invitation to to participate <laughs> in the vlog. Um, I like it was an invitation. <laughs> I, I, I you know coerced you into writing like a, a letter press kind of thing. Me. Yeah, but it was a uh, at that time not not when we started, but bef way before we started, like five years ago. I realized a lot of people I think realized this, and I had conversations with several colleagues about how. A lot of the sciences, and in particular the one that I was working in, which is biology or, or genomics more specifically, were, were changing from hypothesis-driven to data-driven. In biology, it's, 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 kind of a, it's very clear that that shift has happened, and I think it's happening in other fields, and we see it with like, things like the Netflix Prize, how you know, instead of uh, Siskel and Ebert, we have Netflix recommending stuff. Um, we see it in baseball with the Moneyball movie. And we see it in, in crime, fighting crime with some of the stuff that, that they're doing in New York, mm -hmm. using data to, to catch criminals, et cetera. Yeah. So there's like a move, it's like a change that's occurring. I think it was driven mainly by the, by the digital revolution that happened, I don't know, 50 years ago. It eventually, it became easier to store data and to upload data into a computer and, and analyze it. So there's all these different fields where, where all of a sudden it's become an, <coughs> a very empirical science. And, and they're doing what we do for a living, which is, you know, taking data and, and extracting information out of it and, and making sure that information is, is real and not due to chance or, or bias or, or systematic error. So, um, you know, it's something that we, we talked a lot about and we were excited about and we wanted to make sure that everybody out there knew that uh, statisticians have something to, to, to add to this conversation. So, okay, so but why, why didn't people already know this already. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. where, where, so where were we? Where were the statisticians, right? I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. Um, I, th I, I think. Certainly not the PR. We certainly didn't have the PR. And we said that on the blog before, right? Yeah. In terms of, I think that, you know, it seems like people who do stuff with data end up in the New York Times. It's often somebody, you know, from a CS department or something like that. And even though statisticians are doing those sorts of things as well, they yeah. seem to end up in the articles we were sending around. So well, I guess. Now, do you think CS is just better marketing or are they doing better work? I mean. I mean, that's a hard question. I think that there's, I think sometimes that the CS departments are focused a little bit more on problems rather than tools, maybe. And so when they solve problems, they're easier to, to write about it in the New York Times or wherever. But I think also, 
I think there is a little bit of a marketing. I think that's a part of it. You know, statisticians tend to be kind of a reserved group of people. And mm -hmm. so, at the end of the day, we're not going to go out and you know, trumpet uh, our trumpet latest. our yeah the, our list right. of the awesome things that statisticians <laughs> have done, which is you know a pretty long list. And so, um, I think part of the reason for the blog was that maybe we wanted to advertise a few of our success stories as well. You know, like be a be a, a place where people who do statistics as applied to solving real problems could come together and sort of talk about those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. so, that was maybe one of the reasons we got the blog started. I mean, why, why did you? Well, that's I mean, I, mean, I think the, one of the goals that I wanted to do was, was build a community of people who analyze data, who solve you know, interesting problems by applying all kinds of statistical methods, uh, including developing new methods, but also you know, d just applying existing methods in, a, in, a, in an interesting way. And I think um, uh, you know, in, most, in, in many departments, you, know, you have a mix of people. Who do different things, and I kind of, and but there's no kind of, so every department has a mix. But I think it would be nice to create a like a place, even I mean, if it's online, where the the people who are kind of applying the methods to, to solve problems could all come together. Right. Uh, if it's not, you know, if you can't have it in a single department, right? So mm -hmm. you know, the interesting thing that it started off like that, and I thought you know we were going to have this target audience that was going to be mostly academic departments, right. and a few statisticians in each department, maybe yeah. like reading our blog, and then it turned out. That most of the people that you know follow us on Twitter or make comments on our blog or whatever are graduate students or people in CS or in government. Or yeah, I mean when I it's sample, it's not always academic statisticians that are actually into the stuff that we're talking about, which is kind of kind of an interesting. I didn't expect that when we first started. Well, it seems that blog. there's yeah. yeah a large number of what you would not what we would call kind of card carrying statisticians, right? And people who right. are in CS or biology or, or computational biology or something like that, you know, who are doing statistics, um, but are not you know the card carrying type. I think that's not the one thing that I had really anticipated. You know, like you said, I mean, there are lots of what you like people doing statistics out there, right. who uh, seem to be following. So. And I, we also have, I think, a, a pretty big, considerable uh, follow, following from the from computer, uh, computational biology, bioinformatics world, whatever you want to call it. A lot of those aren't card-carrying statisticians, but they do a lot of what they do is data analysis, and, yeah. and some of them even develop methods. Um, but that, that, wouldn't you say, Jeff, that that's like a big chunk of, of people who follow us or people who you know, are interested in some of the, the topics that are related to that? Because we talk about that often, you know, specific to genomics. I think so. I think, I mean, genomics is definitely a topic we talk about, and it's a topic that, you know, our posts that when we talk about genomics tend to be pretty popular. But I think that's also a function of, it's one of the areas where within statistics, there's already kind of a, a big group of people that yeah. are doing this kind of, yeah. you know, more applied uh, sort of data analysis driven approach to mm -hmm. sort of problem solving rather than sort of more methods based. And I think that that's, that's now, I think it's just like blowing up across different areas of statistics, but it sort of it feels like within our community, genomics is the most mature sort of data science, I guess I would say. I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on. I think in, 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 bi in a biostatistics department, that might be true, but I think you have like recommendation systems that also is another one that oh no I think there are other areas where people have been doing you know this sort yeah. of stuff but within sort of our sort of area of statistics yeah maybe this is one area that's sort of been naturally part of statistics and biostatistics departments for a while where whereas yeah. maybe some you know like recommender systems weren't done in statistics departments maybe until pretty recently mm -hmm. if, if at all you know so yeah. so I mean one of the things I hear when I you know when I keep my ear to the ground from staff departments and wherever is that this is all just kind of a fad you know uh, the big data is just the latest, it's the latest thing that you put on your CV so you can get a job, right? Uh, that you're doing big data or whatever, right? I mean, is this gonna, I mean, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like what the last fad was, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but I mean, I think, it, I mean, it, well, are, what, yeah, well, it depends what you, what you mean by a fad. Yeah. If it, a fad, can, can a fad last 50 years? Yeah, right, I mean. Uh, so, that, yeah, I mean, it was, I would like to, learn more about the history of, of our field. I read I, re I read a book called Statistics on the Table, I think. Stigler's book, right? Yeah. 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 And it, it had some very interesting things about the, the beginnings and how way, you know, the way in the, what, 19th century, looking at averages to describe sort of an, an groups of people was was kind of revolutionary. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so, it, so we've come a long way since then. And one of the things that, that he points out is that in the first half of the 20th century, statistics was very, very applied. Yeah. And in the theoretical statisticians, the people who became theoretical statisticians noticed that some of these um, 
the results that we put, people were claiming, if you looked at, if you did the math and, and were a little bit more careful, you would realize they were artifacts, they were false. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of became like an important field because now you have like a, a, a theoretical grounding for, for some of these claims. And then, then could you, would you say that theoretical statistics is a fad that has la that started then and has lasted up to now? I mean, right. I, I don't think that's that's yeah. a fair use of the word. I think, and now I think, maybe, uh, the, the the we're 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 sh we're maybe swinging back to the, to an era where instead of theory empiricism dominates, mm -hmm. and it could last a few years, right? Because there's so so many new things that are arising. Yeah. And well, I, can, I can see, like, I mean, I don't know, like, kind of like the genome, right? I mean, 2000 or, or even or 10 years before that, you know, the genome was like, that was going to be it, right? And yeah, it didn't, the promise didn't quite meet expectations, but people are still, you know, doing genomics. Yeah, right? and, a lot, I mean, and a lot of things, that, this happens in science all the time, right? Yeah. A lot of things we didn't expect were going to be useful from, from, from um, sequencing the human genome have, yeah. have, have arisen. And now it's, I mean, we use the genome for everything, for right. building microarrays, for building you know, new technologies and, and thinking about how to design drugs. Yeah. Know, so. But I guess the fad, I mean, fad, uh, big data, the term, you know, capital big yeah, data, so that's, that's, the, gonna, yeah. that's gonna be, for sure, that's going away. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, you can already see people, people are already sort annoyed of like, by that they're term. already annoyed yeah. by yeah. that term, yeah. because right now, that's the term you do put on your CV. If you want to be, you know, doing whatever the new hotness is, you're doing big data. Yeah, right? we should separate the, the, the semantics from the actual right. the work. work. So the actual work of, now that there's, a, you know, I think that one of the reasons why sort of big data originally became sort of a, an exciting topic it was because, you know, up until, it feels like up until, I, I guess, you know, not too long ago, it was hard to come by data sets. Even, even if you look at sort of for teaching examples and statistics, if, yeah. you were, if you wanted to find a data set to sort of teach a concept to your class, there was two or three websites with like 15 data sets on them. And that was, you know, the sum total of, right. of sort of example data sets you yeah. had to teach statistics. What was that called? I had there was, there's a website we used to go to to get data sets. Statlib? Statlib, yeah. Well, that was, right. yeah. It's software. still there. It's, it's still, really good. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but now, I mean, there, yeah. it's, you go to any government website, they've right. got every data set about, you know, parking tickets and abandoned buildings and everything, or you go to any of these other websites. And so it's, the data is just sort of everywhere. And so I think that the fact that data is everywhere means that there are a lot of problems we can solve with it. Until we run out of problems to solve with data, I think big data, you know, l lowercase big data is going to be around in the sense that as long as we have problems to solve with data and there's data out there, people will be solving those problems. Mm -hmm. I just think that the sort of the hype is definitely going to go away if, if it's not already kind of fading a little bit because everything gets labeled big data, you know? So right. There's, there's different categories of things that you guess, can call big data. But I guess for our field, one question might be, you know, is, this, is the phenomenon of big data, you know, you, you know for better, lack of a better word, is that going to lead to new methods? Or that remains to be seen. I, I, would, I think it will, but it's, it's um, I think it will, yeah. And, I, and we're already seeing things here and there that, mm -hmm. are, that are new, and, and it's, and it, What's interesting, what I find interesting about the, the, the new methodology that's in a way related to what we're calling big data uh, is coming from people who understand computer science and, and statistics. Yeah. Very, both, both feel they understand them very well. I'm, I don't understand computer science well enough, but I know we, we have, we've had a few co colleagues that do, and it's interesting how that considered, it's the new, it's very new, and that's, what, that's, how, you know, that's how science evolves. You right. have really new things, and now we have like two different uh, subjects that are coming together. Right. To That's why it's new. called research, right? But, yeah. I, but I sort of wonder, though, if when you, you say our new method's going to come out, I, it depends on what you define as methods. So okay. I wonder if I, it's not what I, what <laughs> it the hasn't Bill been, Clinton, what answer. hasn't been, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What hasn't been clear to me yet is whether those methods will come out of the sort of the standard mathematical statistical framework that we've sort of built a lot of our methods, you know, in the mm -hmm. past out of, or whether it's going to be... I guess so you could ask who will... Or, or is it going to be computational methods, methods, you yeah. know? So I've certainly seen already really interesting what I would call statistical methods, which are sort of CS problems in the sense that, so I want to calculate the mean on a data set that's, you know, mm -hmm. petabytes. Right. How, do, how do I do that? That's a non-trivial computational problem, but it's also a statistical problem. Right. The solution to that isn't going to be pen and paper, you know, working out, a, you know, the a theorem, but it is going to be solving a, a computational problem. So I wonder if well, there, it seems new to me methods are going to be increasingly geared towards, you know, solving computational problems. Well, it seems to me that, I mean, this may be an artificial distinction, but a lot of the big data problems might be better characterized as kind of engineering problems. Like, you have a huge data right. set, what's the best way to store it? Or what's the, you know, what's the best way to search it? Or what's the best way to kind of, you know, apply right. some method yeah, but, over but it? But there's other... There's things that I think will be st 
statistical and also if it will require also a, a knowledge of algorithms like computing correlation matrices. Okay, yeah. You know, you have a, a, a hundred thousand by hundred thousand correlation matrix and that'll happen, I think, over and over again. So general methods will be useful there. Right. But again, I think they will involve both figuring out what, you know, figuring out things like uncertainty, yeah. which would be complicated, but at the same time, even figuring out, can I even do this? How can I actually get, get the, the result? And that that will be, you will have to have knowledge of algorithms, etc. And that combination, I think, is what's going to lead to the new the new methods of whatever you guys want to call it. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we have, I mean, through the blog, we'll try to keep an eye out for that, right? Through the next 10 years. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, we're doing this for 10 more years? Oh, man, I didn't know. I didn't even know. I started the thing. I didn't know we had signed up for 10 years. Well, you'll be like 30 by then, right? I know. Yeah. That's right. I'll be, I'll be about, and you'll be retired, so. Right. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we'll, I guess we'll just wrap it up there. Okay. All right. So thanks for joining us for our very first uh, video podcast. So please let us know if you liked it. Because you know we're not going to make more of these if it turns out that you all hated it. So, um, <laughs> um, and so leave a comment at simplystatistics.org. Uh, thanks for watching. This is the view. <laughs> <laughs>